Today at Speedy's Garage, we're back on Orange Crush. We're gonna be installing a Raptor shift light. It's LED, programmable, digitally. Comes with a couple of brackets, although I'm not really sure why it has two. I'm gonna use this one. It's smaller, easier to mount. It also comes with two cap covers. One is black to just black it out. The other one is a yellow color in case the LEDs are too bright. It comes with an instruction sheet which we'll use to determine which wire colors go where, but it's a pretty basic four wire hookup with power, ground, RPM signal, and clutch switch. This particular unit has the launch RPM feature, which means when I hit my launch RPM at the track, it'll illuminate, letting me know when I'm in the range. And then once the clutch is released, it goes into shift light mode. I did pick up some hardware to mount it. The challenge is the little mounting plate or mounting bracket rather, has a very shallow spot for the bolt to pass through in terms of where the actual shift light housing will be. So I picked up a 6 by 32 machine screw and it's a 3 8 in length which should be plenty long and it had a flat enough head that it won't make contact with the shift light housing when it's mounted. I also picked up a washer to go on the back side to give it some strength and a locking nylon nut to hold it all in place. Now some people may just use a self-tapping screw or something like that to hold it in place, but I like things to be a little bit more thought out and a little bit more thorough. Several other mounting options that you have, uh, depending on where you put it in the car, you could just put a piece of Velcro here and then just let the Velcro hold it. This thing is really light, so that's one of the options, but I wanted mine permanently mounted and secure. To get this one done, we're gonna need a soldering iron, possibly some heat shrink, definitely some corrugated wire loom. In my case, I'm gonna need a drill bit and my electric drill for the mounting screw. Other than that, I think just some patience running the wire where they need to go. And if you point your browser at raptorperformance.com, they actually have an install section for the Dodge Challenger, and it goes into the actual connectors that you'll want to get to for the RPM signal, the clutch signal, etc. And it has to do with coil, and they even break it down by 2011 plus and 2009 to 2010. The next thing you gotta decide is where you're gonna actually mount the shift light. I originally wanted mine right there between the speedometer and the tachometer, and I thought it would be easy to just dremel out a small hole and put a grommet or something in there and then mount it, and that way it would be right in the center of view. However, after I disassembled the dash, the circuit board for the cluster actually goes all the way to the top of this line right here, all the way to the top. So there's really nowhere to put this shift light in the dash and it fit without having to do some pretty serious surgery. And I just wasn't willing to spend the time trying to figure that part out. <clears throat> Another option I thought about was to actually put it inside this vent so that it would just flash inside of there and kind of be hidden. Um, I was almost convinced to go that direction and then run the wire back down the front. I took this out and had a look around. In the end, I decided not to because what does it matter if it's hidden when I've already got a pillar uh, gauge pot over here with boost gauges and everything else so it's not really that subtle anyway and this right here actually ends up being just about the perfect spot mount it right underneath my aeroforce gauge and it's right there in nice view it's also easy to reach Should I need to make any adjustments or anything of that nature and the wires will just run straight out and down the side there to get back into the dash to go where they need to go I have seen other folks just mount them right here with a little piece of Velcro like I mentioned. So if you don't want to do a lot of work, that's probably the easiest thing to do. It'll sit right there very nicely without too much trouble. But I like to go a little bit extra and, and have my things be permanent. So I'm going to mount it right there underneath my Aeroforce gauge. I didn't want to take a chance on seeing the silver of that mounting screw. So I hit it with a shot of flat black before we install it. Then I just popped the pillar pot off. I drilled my small hole right here. Now we're ready to mount up the bracket. So I started removing the lower half of the dash to expose my wiring. As you guys have seen a lot of my other videos, I've got a lot of custom wiring under here. I've got a switch 12 volt source coming from a circuit boss, which I intend to use. Uh, that's going to be this guy right here, where the blue tape is. I'm gonna use that for power. I'm gonna use this bolt for ground. And because these wires are kind of running different places, I wanted to give some slack in this. What I'm gonna do is feed it back into that cavity behind the dash and give myself about 18 inches. That way if I ever need to pull the light out to do any adjustments or anything, it's easy to work with. And then I'm gonna take the black wire 
and put a ring terminal on it <clears throat> and I'm just gonna bolt it here. But because the other wires run different places, I went ahead and removed all of the rubber coating off of it, or, or rubber sheathing rather, and I had to do it in small pieces. And then I'll put my own back on it to finish it off. I'll probably use, since these are so thin, I probably won't use the corrugated stuff I showed you. I'll probably use some um, loom that I have, some wire loom. Okay, I wanted to stop at this step <clears throat> and show you what I've done. So I actually did end up using some of that corrugated wire loom. I feed this back. There's our ring terminal. It's going to be our ground right there. And then I ran the rest of the wire harness down behind this panel. There's a hole in the dash brace right here. I put a rubber grommet in it. And I ran the wires in the loom back to where all the rest of my custom wiring terminates, which is right here. And I always zip tie it to this brace. So that's where I'm at now. The power will get hooked up there. The white and the green will then get routed out to the engine bay. All right, we're close to running the RPM signal and clutch switch wires. So we take a look at the computer, which is just underneath a couple of these little plastic pop tabs. There's one there and there's one on the other side, which I've already removed. Set that out of the way. And then here's our computer held onto a bracket by a 14 millimeter bolt. Okay, so once you have the PCM out, you'll notice it has three large 38 pin connectors on it uh, from the top down, so where your bracket is. This is connector one, connector two, and then connector three. Uh, the fourth one is actually empty. There's no pins in there. The next thing you wanna do is use a small hook, and I've already removed the cap from this third one, but I wanted to show this to you. You very gently pry back on these two legs, and there's two on the other side as well and then you can lift this off. And that exposes the pins, and you can see which wires you actually need to work with. There may be a special service tool available for that because this cap has four holes in the top of it, which are obviously used for removal, but you can do it with a small hook like I showed you. Just be really careful as these are delicate and brittle plastic. You don't want to break them. And the reason we remove that cap is so we can actually see the pin numbers. Don't go strictly by the wire color. You want to double check it via pin number. And you can see that this ends in 10, so that's pin 10 right there, and then 19, 28, 38. And it's the same on this other connector up here. And so on connector three, the one we're interested in is pin number 26, which is this green with orange stripe. And the reason I'm telling you don't just count on that being green with orange stripe all the time is because there happens to be another green with orange stripe in here. So if you didn't actually take the cap off and count the pins, you would be likely to grab the wrong wire. Connector two is a little bit easier because it's pin 10 that you want, and it's the furthest right one or the one that's closest to the bottom of that connector, the top row, and it is dark blue with green stripe. So that's our RPM signal, and then the orange uh, stripe on the dark green is our clutch signal. So here's the white and the green wire covered in loom, and now it's ready to run to the PCM in the engine bay. This loom I love, it really makes everything look factory but get the kind that doesn't fray. I tried to save a couple of bucks, and what'll happen is the ends get a little bit tricky to work with as they fray. See how crappy that is? So what I have to do is put heat shrink over this after I've uh, run it. Bending uh, cables over will help them feed through the firewall easier, and I just put a little bit of electrical tape on there to make it smooth so it'll feed through really quick. And you can see there's a grommet back there by the firewall that I've used to run all of my other wires. I'm gonna use that same one for this. Um, pretty good size hole right there and easy to get to and it's right above the steering column So it's well out of the way as you can see I routed the wire along the old ones back and out the firewall and There's where it exit the firewall And it follows some hoses over to the PCM if you have trouble getting your wire to pass through that grommet You can just use a flat blade screwdriver uh, and, and tape your wire to the end of that and you can push it through and I went ahead and routed it all the way over so that I knew I had plenty of slack to make my connections at the PCM, and now we're just gonna hook everything up. Easy peasy. Okay, this next part can be a little scary, but don't let it bother you, it's just part of hot rodding. You're gonna split the wiring harness at pin 10 on connector two, and pin 26 on connector three, and that's specific to 2009 and 2010 models. Uh, later models, they change the computer, so you wanna check to make sure you get the right wires for your application. And when I say split the wire, I mean, peel back some of the sheath, but don't cut the wire. I found a tool like this works the best. 
It's easy. It'll actually grip the wire and then you just gently pull and it will separate the sheath for you. So that's how I got it done. Now we're ready to solder. When you get done, this is what you should end up with. Use proper soldering technique. And that is by the numbers. Touch the soldering iron to the wire, heat the wire up, and then you touch the solder to the wire. You never touch the solder to the soldering iron. Let the solder draw into the wire. That creates a good solder joint and you'll never have any problem with them. So now I'm gonna tape everything back up, put our caps back on and get back onto the interior. And there's what it looks like all tidied up and ready to go back in. Now come back and hook up your ground and finally hook up your switch 12 volt. I'm using one of the leads from my circuit boss. I like that solution because it keeps all of my aftermarket circuits completely separate uh, from the car's systems. And also, the Challenger doesn't have very many switch 12 volt sources to begin with. Uh, only other one I'm aware of is your power plug over there. You can get switch 12 volts from that if you don't have a circuit boss, but I did it this way, it's nice and easy. And finally, just fire it up and follow your instructions to set it up. It's basically you push a couple of the buttons on the unit and they're outlined here and it puts you into program mode and what I noticed on mine is you'll push both buttons and when you go from setting to setting hold them down for about a second to a second and a half and it'll advance to the next setting. So here it is in action I've set it to 2000 RPMs just for the demonstration. So there it is. Works great and then the launch feature if you push the clutch in I've set it to about 3500 It'll stay lit when you're below it goes out and when you're above it flashes so very handy with everything wired up and tested configured just reassemble your dash so that's how you wire and install a Raptor shift light not too bad just four wires to hook up and a little bit of soldering but wiring is probably not anybody's favorite thing to do just take your time and follow the directions now we'll know we're launching at the right RPM and shifting at the right RPM for maximum power to get the most out of the car at the track. And as with all of my electronics projects, I made up a quick wiring diagram for reference in the future. I have a hard enough time remembering what I ate for dinner last night, and I'm certainly not going to remember all these wires and where they went six months from now. If you'd like to see some more how-to and other cool stuff, visit my website, www.speediesgarage.net, or just hit subscribe in the bottom right corner.